name is Roberto, last name is Rodriguez. And uh, really surely it's, uh, as the saying goes, uh, half a dozen, six of the other. Neither one was uh, my choice. Are you a Bernie guy? No, I wasn't, although I was leaning at one point where he almost had me convinced he was the real deal, but I, I, I was disappointed in, in, in Bernie's behavior. Um, if, if I thought if he had been really genuinely or somehow able to break free of whatever was got a hold of him, he might have, he could have started a third movement or a third party and been very successful at it, in my opinion. If he, I mean, there, I mean, the statistics show the majority of the people, no matter which side of the spectrum you are, want a national health care system. They want the college to be uh, just like the public schools. They want the infrastructure. You know, they need jobs more than ever now. There's so many things that could be done. And, they're, they're, and they're, there really are answers out there. The problem is, is that we have a, a structure, an economic structure here, which only allows one kind of game to be played. So anyone who can't play the game well is viewed as a failure. And unfortunately, I think a lot of us carry that inside. We internalize that, which kind of affects how we see each other. I mean, imagine if if, if baseball was the only sport you're allowed to be played mm -hmm. in this country, right? Then every other athlete who would excel at anything else would not always be good at that, right? So they would be considered failures, falsely, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with this economic system. Right? It's, uh, you know, uh, in fact. You know, history has shown research, serious researchers like uh, Riani and Eisler, who wrote the, between the chalice and the blade, talked about societies that were more egalitarian, more socialistic, in the, and this was way, way back, we're going thousands of years ago. And it seems to be the norm for people to behave cooperatively rather than competitively. Dennis. Okay, hi, Dennis. What's up? No, is that an um, eye honey hat? No, this is a crown. Oh, I mean crown. No, okay. I don't know the brand name. Okay. So tell us what you thought or what your beliefs are. Um, again, you know, like I don't really know too much about politics. You know, I just uh, kind of like hear what the news portrays people as. So I heard Trump was bad and Biden was good, whatever that means. I don't know. My uh, my main concern about change is more or less the inner city change because that's where my family and close ones and that's where it affects me most. Not the economy in a sense to where, you know, I, I, I wasn't brought up to, you know, uh, have these views on politics like that. So my main concern is that, you know, uh, the inner city is taken care of and, you know, Black Lives Matter. Okay. So you, congratulations to whoever wins it. I know it's good for whoever's a winner. Yeah. So did you feel like Trump had an effect on the Black Lives Matter movement? Um, thing is this, it's hard to tell because they don't speak on it too much. So I can't really put my view on Trump. Again, you know, the media portrays people the way they want it to go. So they said Trump was not, wasn't a good guy and Biden is a better guy. I don't know that to be true. Mm -hmm. You know, personally, I just, you know, whoever's in it, you know, no one's perfect. So I just hope that people just have the best interest for the people. Like everybody got their thing with them, but you know, I'm, I'm more concerned about how it affects, you know, where I could see it at mm -hmm. for the most part, no matter who's in office, doesn't make me no difference. All right, well, let's see your shirt. Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm, that's a fact. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Hi, my name is Jasmine, and um, I'm very happy that Trump is gone. Just, just, just because she's not. There's, just, he was just very, very, very childish and immature. And I think America needs some structure, and I'm glad we have that back. And I'm glad the Democratic Party is back in power. And I'm glad, and I'm hope, hoping that this year is way more smoother than the last four years. And, I'm just happy. Kamala and fire. <laughs> Savon, what do you think about today's election results? I'm happy and I'm satisfied and I hope everybody just give them a chance to fix everything that's, try to fix it and make it better. And tell us your name again. Roger Jones. Okay, hi Roderick. Tell us your thoughts about the election results. Well, thoughts about the election results, so I'm pleased that Trump is out of office because I feel that with the, you know, the advent of a new person in office, that there's an opportunity for us to bridge gaps and to, you know, bridge, to get certain things accomplished that wasn't able to be done during his, um, for his campaign. So that's something that I'm looking forward to. Are you, are you most upset about as him as a person? That he never told the truth. He was very untruthful. Very. And what were you most upset about with his policies? 
Well, every one of them sucked. Every, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't drag one out that didn't suck. So, <laughs> all of them sucked. All of them. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm beyond happy. I've cried a couple of times today. Probably will again. But, it's wonderful. What were some of your... Sure. <laughs> what? It's a breath of relief. <laughs> yes. What were some of your biggest concerns um, just with the previous administration moving forward? Uh, many things. Um, global warming is probably my top priority and what I think about. Immigration um, affects a lot of people in my life and that was a big issue. And just the way that he's treated the office and our country to do during this time. It's just, Okay, so you have people personally that you have been affected by ICE and everything? Yes. Is there anything you could share? You know, the whole immigration process in the past four years has eroded and everyone's in limbo. You know, everyone in the process feels like there's no way to go and they feel like any second they, the rug could be swept out from under them. So. Feeling like there's someone in the presidency that'll listen and you know will help the DACA and hopefully like get immigration going again because it's been kind of stalled 